Okay, you've seen the winch work. It's a little noisy, a little clunky, but it works nonetheless. Uh, most of you watching have seen these little units before. They just allow the winch to be used without uh, requiring another channel on your radio. You can see I've got the front valance and the grill pretty much wrapped up. The grill surround was built in uh, CAD, pretty simple 3D shape. The mesh behind it, I worked with a bunch of things, all the way from screen door to this brass stuff and ended up using this plastic, seemed to be pretty much the closest thing. I used Axial Light Buckets as the headlight pods and then swapped out the lenses for these clear Tamiya ones. Finally, the marker lights, well, they're from my Land Rover collection. In the last video, you would have noticed when I closed the hood that the windshield frame was installed. This includes the rubber seal, the windshield wipers, also now have the springs installed inside them so they hold themselves up against the windshield. The windshield itself is yet another trick from Headquake. The rubber seal around here is actually a wiring insulator. To recreate this, you take a really sharp hobby knife and you carefully cut down one side of your wire. You remove all the wiring and you end up with this nice rubber insulator with a groove down one side. This is very easily used on the edge of a polycarbonate window and then you use the pressure from the rubber seal to wedge it inside the windshield frame. Now I've backed this up with a little bit of testers clear parts cement. Uh, this works really good on clear parts. It doesn't craze like CA glue. So I use it on the windshield, on the headlights, on the lenses and many of the other clear parts in the truck. Other updates include running boards, clear tinted sun visors, I've got door hinges, window hinges, and I did my best to mimic the side mirror design. They're adjustable, they have scale hardware, and I made my own mirror. And I did this using Spazstix mirror chrome with black backing. I did this behind polycarbonate. Did this for both of the side mirrors and the rear view. This leads us to the interior. I'll start with the dash. Right up here, we have the access panel for the wiper mechanism. Over on the passenger side, we've got an oh shit bar on the dash. HVAC vents. Down here we have the control knobs that in the real truck are billet aluminum. In place of those I've actually used small Tamiya hardware. It's kind of my nod to Tamiya stuff. I do this on all my vehicles. Tamiya's always kind of uh, snuck in real hardware in place of scale elements in some of the more expensive kits. It's history. I kind of like to do it. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I think it looks cool anyways. So the dashboard in the Scale 44 is very similar to those in their current FJ series. I did my best to try to recreate the glove box door, the clock, and the gauge bezels. Now I got them close, but I had to make some changes to help accommodate some of the electronics that's hidden underneath the valance and behind the dash. You can see a nice glow coming from the gauge cluster, the clock, and down here the touchscreen inside the console. Also the servo that works the steering column. That's hooked up, so hopefully next video you'll see somebody uh, sitting in this driver's seat and he'll be all arms and elbows. Before I go much further, I did want to discuss the doors for a moment. Uh, while the hood and the gate will open, unfortunately the doors will no longer. I can't discuss budget, but I can tell you we're at the very top of it. And the, uh, the labor to make these doors open, close, and latch properly uh, is just far too high for this project. We'll get them on the next one. All right, so while the doors are glued in, I don't think it makes a huge impact on the project, uh, mainly because with the roof off, you can see so much of this interior anyways. I don't think you're losing much detail. Uh, I made some door pulls, some handles, and some map pockets. Uh, these are 3D parts and they're combined with uh, this material which is from a dollar store pencil case and uh, some thin gauge wire and that's what makes up the map pockets in here. Uh, once I add some of the uh, scale detail along the tops and get the driver in, I think it will distract the eye enough that it won't be that big of a deal that these don't open. In frame right now is the roll cage. This was created with brass. I used uh, brass stock to create these modular corner pieces. Once it was stuck together, I soldered it and built feet for all the vertical posts and it bolts into the uh, floor of the truck. The seat belts, uh, one of my favorite details in this segment, are bolted to the top portion of the cage. I'm using a combination of parts. Uh, the aluminum is laser cut and it's from a Ya yeah Racing five point harness kit. Uh, they provided the upper brackets here, uh, my buckles, which are these, and then the lower portions that bolt to the floor as well. 
It took a little bit to source the material for the belt. I ended up using polyester ribbon from my local craft store in place of the supplied belt with the Yeah Racing kit. This is thicker, it's much more suitable for a racing harness than a factory looking seat belt. I made 3D printed mechanisms which bolt to the floor that receive the other end of the belt. Also, the passenger belts are finished up. The one for the driver isn't installed yet. Uh, the seat isn't bolted down either. I'm waiting for the figure to arrive from Matt's place so I can get his ass in the seat and I'll be able to better judge how much belt material uh, will be required to wrap around him tightly and plug into the receiver down here. Looking down at a few of the other details, the console, we've got cup holders in here. Again, the touch screen that lights up. We've got a padded lid that uh, is painted in the same texture as the seat, so it looks like it's the same textile. Up in front of that, I have the shifters for the transfer case and the e-brake handle. Those two items are from an axial parts sprue, and then I created the shifter so it looks like it's a matching set. Moving towards the tail end of uh, both the truck and this video, the floors have been sprayed with scale bed liner. It's got floor mats in it. The floor mats were created with this. It's a one-sided adhesive foam that's been sprayed out with the same textured paint as the seats and the console. With some practice and some very light coats, I was able to spray this without the paint biting in or eating the foam. After some testing, it's actually surprisingly durable and it's still pliable. It's also nice when you reach into the truck, touch something, and it doesn't feel like plastic. It's got some give to it. I'm going to close this video with the back end of the truck. After you swing both carriers out and drop the gate, with a little effort, you can actually open up the inner storage compartment. We've also got speakers back here now. So the speakers are a three-piece design. I came up with these and they're, they're made with stainless steel pipe screens and some 3D printed parts. You can see the stainless screen pops into the outer bezel and then it goes together as one unit. Now, originally I printed these with some pretty detailed speakers, but then realized once assembled, you can't see through these damn screens anyways. So I simplified the designs. I made some larger ones for the back and up front in the kick panels under the dash are smaller versions of these. Well, it looks like this guy has stumbled his way through yet another video. I'm very excited to think that the next one, lucky number 13, will be the last in the series with Icon. I'll be covering the driver, the roof, working through scale details, and all the final paintwork on the truck. Thanks for joining me again, and I'll catch you next time.